Hey everyone, just a quick heads up. This is not going to be how my normal videos are going to be made. Like the quality in this with like the gameplay in the background and the trailers. I'm going to try and change it up with different setups in the next few videos. I just, I, I can't really get it set up right now, but I'll try my best. This, I'll, I'll try not just to be lazy and I'll just get done. It's also been like nine months since I played Payday, so yeah, I'm not the best, uh, but I need background footage, so she's gonna have to work with it. So this may sound crazy, but basically where I live in Canada right now, we are going through a major, like, well not like causing damage, but like a pretty big snowstorm right now. It's been snowing all day. I think it's actually still snowing right now as I'm recording this, so... A lot of people around here, as you can imagine, don't exactly love snow, but for me, like, what I like about snow is that it gives me, like, this really kind of, like, <laughs> this is gonna, you probably get what I mean by this, but it gives me this kind of, like, cozy sort of feeling. And something that, I don't know why, but I associated with that was just nostalgia, like, you're, it's 2012 and you're just playing Minecraft on a snowy day on your Windows XP laptop, like that kind of nostalgia. And in the midst of all that nostalgia, I started thinking about a game that I was so hyped for last year. And like, it feels weird because normally when you think of nostalgia, you think of something like maybe like six, seven, or maybe even like over a decade old. This game that I want to talk about today is barely even a year old now. Actually, it's not even a year old. It turns one year in October, I believe. And what's sad is that from what I can... And what's sad is that from what I remember, nobody really talked about this game or played it, even though it had something huge in it. And I'll get into that right now. But you probably already know what that is because, well, it's in the title. And unfortunately, everyone... And unfortunately, everyone just seemed to kind of forget about this game after it came out. Like, it was maybe mentioned once in, like, maybe a direct, and then that was it. So, yeah, it's a little bit... Saying that this game is dead is a bit of an understatement. But today, I want to shed some light on it once again. Because, you know, we're, I'm in one of those moods, so... So, I guess without further ado, let's get into Starlink, which... That might that name might sound familiar to some of you, it might not to others. So, Starlink, I have made videos on this game before, but I haven't made one basically since it came out. So if you don't know what this game is, I don't blame you, but I guess I'll just give you a brief rundown. Essentially what it is, is if you know what Skylanders is, it's it that's basically what it is. The best way to describe it is like it's this open world space game where you fly around with this and then like you just kind of I guess just explore planets and do stuff. It's like it's I mean if you made the comparison in No Man's Sky but to me and to a lot of people what really sets it apart from everything else is the fact that this is the only Nintendo Switch game that has Star Fox in it which may sound a little bit weird but yeah it's it does actually have it. So that's like the main selling point. I would, I don't know if I would buy this on like Xbox One or PS4 just because like this game, I mean, it's not, it's not, not that it's a bad game. It's just like, it does get a little bit stale after a while. And the whole Star Fox aspect does add a whole new layer of it. Like it's got its own whole like branch off the story related to Star Fox. And I'm not gonna lie, that was part of the reason, actually no, that was the entire reason why I bought this game, was because it was Star Fox on the Switch, and the whole Toy to Life thing seemed kind of interesting. And some people went crate, and some people went insane over this when it came out, like, it was, and honestly, you can't really blame them, because it's a, technically the only new Star Fox game since, like, the really terrible, like, Wii U game, I think it was Star Fox Zero. Yeah, yeah, Zero was like this game that came out, I believe, in like 2015 or 2016, and it was just trash. Like, everyone hated it. It was just, like, it was a massive blunder. But as you guessed from the title of this video, and you probably know, just based on the fact that nobody's really brought it up since, like, November, December last year, I say, this game just tanked hard when it came out, which is unfortunate but i mean it's not too unexpected i remember seeing a video that just it was it was so sad to me because it was like 
I feel like a lot of people would have liked this game, and basically, it was like a video, I think it was from Inside Gaming, when they were before called, like, The No, I think it yeah, was. Yeah, and, like, The No made a video talking about Starlink in, like, one of their news sort of segments, and apparently when the game came out, it, like, literally within the first week it came out, there was a good amount of points where on Twitch, zero people were watching Starlink, which is kind of crazy which i it's i mean there's a lot of games that get zero like streams but in the first week of a ubisoft and nintendo partnership game of it having multiple times per day not like in like the really late hours too of it just having zero viewers is just that's that's concerning and after the game came out nothing really like there wasn't really any major marketing after that it was just it just kind of disappeared everyone sort of just forgot it and then after the game came out, from what I found out, apparently Ubisoft took notice on the fact that nobody cared about Starlink, and they cut orders for all the plastic, like, Toys to Life pieces, and basically, they just kinda, out of sight, out of mind, Starlink is just kinda dead back in, I'd say, November, December, which is, I mean, I don't blame Ubisoft for that, but... It, it, it's still sad. Some people may feel like, why are you being so empathetic over a Toys to Life game? And I guess I understand that point, but it's just like, I don't know, like, I just really enjoyed my experience of Starlink. I thought it was fun, and I thought that it was definitely unique. I was, I'm not like a major, like, I, I'm not like a huge fan of Toys to Life. I, I wouldn't even call myself a fan. I find the whole business practice just pretty... It's a pretty scummy way to make money, but I did like the take that they took on it. But there's not much that we can do about it now, because this game is way deep in the obscurity hole right now. Then what I found out was that on September 5th of this year, so 2019, Ubisoft actually talked a bit about their what they learned from the failure of Starlink. And they learned where they messed up, and they figured out why it was. But essentially, all they really said is that we learned how to make family games with Starlink, and that's important to us. And the people who are playing Starlink are happy playing it, and that's okay. So essentially what that means is that people who are playing the game can just keep playing, no new DLC, no new parts or anything like that, just gonna stay over there. And we're gonna take what we learned from that, and we're gonna apply it to make more successful family games. Apparently Ubisoft is starting up like a new IP too called like Gods and Monsters apparently which from what I've heard about it I'm not really too interested. I don't even think I'm gonna be really delving that much. In. I'm not, I didn't even buy Starlink for the whole family sort of thing. I just bought it because of Star Fox. So I don't think I'm gonna be really trying that out too much but who knows it might be successful. It might be the best game ever made. But in the end that's just the story. But in the end, that's just the story of Starlink. It lasted maybe two days, unfortunately, and then it just kind of faded into obscurity, which it's not incre it wasn't incredibly unexpected. Also, guys, I'm just saying before I wrap up this video, if any of you uh, VSCO or Visco, I, I don't know how you say it, if there's any Visco girls or boys out there, a Visco boy, if, if those exist, the Hydro Flask Vacuum Tumbler, 22 fl F fl what does fl mean <laughs> florida's 22nd congress okay i don't know what i'm looking for here but 22 fl i'm guessing flask um ounces it's 40 percent off on red outlet that's a re re outlet this isn't a sponsorship i'm just saying if you, any of you guys want a hydro flask for your visco projects now is the time to get it but i'm just saying all right well i hope you enjoyed this video and, I guess, goodbye. See ya.